a place where the Earth lives and breathes dynamically. It's a place preserving its primitive mystery formed by glaciers. Iceland. I encountered the wonders of Mother Nature and unforgettable experiences that still make my heart race. <laughs> Above all, the modest people are who made this all the more joyful. My trip to Iceland takes place only after a long wait. Today's story begins in the hot lands of that country. Iceland was discovered long, long ago by Vikings who were wandering along the Arctic Ocean. It was called the Land of Ice because nothing but ice could be seen. But in fact, this is a land of fire where volcanoes continuously erupt. The first destination for today is Miviton, the heart of volcano terrain in northern Iceland. Iceland is an island country in the North Atlantic, just below the Arctic Circle. The island was formed 16 million years ago from volcanic activity. Its size is similar to that of Korea, but the population is a little less than 320,000. However, it's a dream travel destination for many due to its multifaceted natural landscapes which include volcanoes, glaciers, and the Northern Lights. Northern Iceland is particular in that it is full of frequently erupting volcanoes and volcanic terrain created by the flow of lava. Miviton is in the center of this area. This is the fourth largest lake in Iceland and it is surrounded by large and small volcanoes, as well as numerous craters and hot springs. This is like an oasis in a desolate volcanic region. This peaceful region of Miviton is a beloved holiday destination among Icelandic people. Doesn't it look like a picturesque postcard? I can't imagine how such hot lava swept over this area long ago. However, just behind the village are craters, which once emitted heat. I'm on my way there, but the wind is fierce. It's so strong that it feels like it's coming from the North Pole. I finally arrive at the end of a hiking trail that leads to a peculiar looking volcanic landform. These are the masterpieces made by volcanic eruptions from about 2300 years ago. However, as a matter of fact, this isn't where lava was ejected. These are called pseudo-craters, 
which were formed by the steam emitted from the ground by the magma that flows under the lake. Knowing this, they do look different, don't they? I'm now heading for the Krafla volcanic region, located northeast of Miviton Lake, to get a good look at the Land of Fire. Magma flows near the surface of the Earth here, and it's where you can get a vivid look at current volcanic activity. It looks like it's about to spew lava at any moment. Yeah. It was formed by a volcanic eruption long ago, and the diameter reaches a grand 350 meters. However, an interesting thing about this lake is its name. It means large hell in the Icelandic language. Icelandic people long ago must have believed that witches and devils lived in this lake. The area where steam is rising from the ground is Lernjukur. It is an active volcano that erupted as late as 1984. Yellow sulfur has permeated the surface of the land. I feel like it's getting ready for another eruption. Steam still rises from several places, and the smell of sulfur fills the air. Here, traces of volcanic activity are as evident as though it happened yesterday. Now the path leads into lava terrain. Beyond that, black land unfolds endlessly before me. Krafla geothermal area is a huge caldera landform as big as 10 kilometers in diameter. There were as many as 29 volcanic eruptions over a period of 300 years, from the 1700s to 1980. Traces of lava, which covered this region at the time, remain as it was then. It is a desolate land where not a single tree can be found. This landscape is so strange. It almost feels as if I made an emergency landing on some alien planet. I let myself feel the rough breath of earth on this scorched land. The 
the black plain spews steam here and there. If there were a witch or devil living in Iceland, perhaps this is where they would live. The dynamic flow is vivid like a Van Gogh painting. I'm not the only person who thought of hell upon seeing this dark land, am I? English writer and godfather of contemporary fantasy literature, J.R.R. Tolkien, is among those many people. He created another world out of the strange, desolate land. Banjie Jeong을 쓴 Tolkien은 실제 소설 속의 죽음의 땅을 표현하기 위해서 이곳을 방문했다 그러죠. 그리고 이곳에서 영감을 얻어서 그 무서운 무시무시한 공간을 표현했다 그래요. 인간의 상상력이 아무리 대단하다 하더라도 결국은 자연을 따라가지 못하는 것 같아요. 자연이 주는 느낌을 가지고 결국 우리는 그것을 또 키워서 우리의 상상을 하니까 자연이 없다면 그 상상도 시작을 못했겠죠. 아 정말 대단하고 무시무시한 곳이에요. However, for the residents here, volcanoes aren't simply something scary. At times, they bestow gifts. Thanks to this, 25% of the total electricity demand is covered by geothermal power. It's a true source of green energy. I meet another world in this surreal natural landscape created by volcanoes. In Verrier, about 20 minutes from the Krafla geothermal area, you can see various geothermal activities. Verrier is a perfect volcanic region which bubbles even today. Is this why? Sulfur first greets my nose with a stinging stench upon entering this land. It makes me realize that I'm walking on top of an active volcano. Yeah. This is
During the past 1,000 years, there have been more than 150 volcanic eruptions here. Even now, everywhere I lay my eyes are large and small holes. Gray mud is bubbling and boiling in those holes. I wouldn't be surprised if they exploded immediately. The volcanoes here live and move endlessly. I discover a local broadcasting team on my way back from viewing the Krafla geothermal area. I quietly look on to see what they're filming. It turns out to be hot spring bread, a Miviton local specialty item. What do you call this bread in Iceland? It's kvera bread. In Korea, we call it onchanpan. The bread is made in the traditional way. Uniquely, the bread is baked in the ground. They use geothermal heat to bake it. They're used commonly in the village, like the old laundry spots were in Korea. I'm curious how the bread tastes. We have to, you know, put the bag and water and stuff, and the uh, stuff to lift it up. And if you open it after we close it, then it goes down. That's why we don't want people to open it. The villagers use each of the designated spots. They usually bake rye, a popular bread among Northern Europeans. They bury the dough in the ground, and all that is left to do is wait. So how many hours does it take? Um, it takes about 26 hours, but it depends a little bit on which uh, hole we bake it in. Some holes are faster than others. Mm. So is it done? It should be done. It should be done. Has it actually baked well? Wow. The aroma of the freshly baked bread is tantalizing. Oh. <laughs> ah, can I eat here? No, sorry. <laughs> uh, sorry, what? <laughs> no, we eat it uh, at the restaurant. Let's see. Uh... We cut it special way. Mm. Oh, it's good. I can eat it. 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 Ah. Okay, okay, yeah, yeah. hurry, hurry, let's go to the restaurant. Okay? I cannot wait. <laughs> Good. <laughs> okay. Ah. I wonder what bread made with geothermal heat tastes like. The bread has baked well in the ground. I have tried many different types of bread while traveling the world but this is the first time I'm trying bread made in a hot spring. Is it from the uh, geyser? Yes, yes, this is the geyser bread. We have been baking for 24 hours so in the ground. Smooth, yes. so lovely. Yeah, and the uh, temperature yeah. is 100 degrees. Wow. Put some butter on it, and then we put some smoked fish oh. on it. Here, they also smoke things in the traditional way, too. This is fish and lamb smoked from the smoke of burning dried cow dung. Just how does the combination of these taste? I really can't wait to taste what it's like. <laughs> how does it how, how, how can I spray the taste? Just fantastic. 
Dus oh. Ik ga smaar smok. Ja. Mix het fish. Ja. En dan very. En een little bit uh, sweet taste, yes, maybe? Yes. Yeah. 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 Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm. 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 Yeah. 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 여러 가지 표현 방법인데 저는 그냥 너무 너무 맛있어요. I'm now off to the volcano of Thrinakagagur in the south to see another type of volcano. In Iceland, there are over 30 active volcanoes and a total of about 140 volcanoes. Among them are some curious looking volcanoes. I walk along the rugged field following the sound of the Earth's heart, which is making my own heart race. Wow! Oh, this bridge, huh? Here we are, we're at the, the fissure that runs through, through straight through over Iceland and on the other side you've got the American plate and we are standing on the Eurasian plate and this is the bridge in between the two. I am on the other side of the world. Wow, I want to go to this place. Wow, the world. Let's go. Let's go. I never thought of this place as well. I never thought of this place. 저는 지금 유라시아와 아메리카 사이에 양다리를 걸치고 있어요. <웃음> Iceland is where Earth's two plates, the North American and the Eurasian plate meet. Because the plates collide persistently, this area has the most energetic volcanic activity in the world. I feel the mighty strength of the living, breathing life of Earth on the edge of these two plates. You have to go through the crater at the top in order to enter the volcano's interior. I discover yet another fantastic view at the top. One thousand years ago, it was flowing all the way down to the ocean. So this was when the first Vikings came to Iceland. One thousand years ago, this was flowing down there. It was a big, big lava field. Oh, it's mujige, 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 mujige. It looks like a good omen. Finally, I'm entering the volcano. It feels quite strange to descend into a hole that used to spew magma. Science fiction pioneer and French writer Jules Verne described the entrance of the center of the Earth through a volcano in Iceland in his novel Journey to the Center of the Earth. I now arrive at that entrance.
After exploding 4,000 years ago, the interior of this dormant volcano is ever so quiet and beautiful. The interior of the volcano is literally mystical. It seems as if colorful and ornate gems are embedded along the walls. Actually, this was a room that was full of magma. As the magma erupted, instead of spewing out of the crater, it returned into the interior where it cooled. Um, but what is special, if you, if you look in the interior of the volcano, you can see all these colors and the colors are coming from the minerals of the lava and the rock that the lava is rubbing against during the volcano is alive. And you can see lots of golds, lots of oranges, lots of yellows, and also lots of purples or blacks and reds. And those colors come from the sulfur and the iron inside the rock and the lava. The yellow inside is, is a sulfur, and oh. this, this mineral uh, leaks out when it's really hot. So w when the volcano was dying and becoming dormant, the minerals started leaking out, and that's where you can see all the colors inside the volcano itself. It's amazing. Even time seems to stand still inside the volcano. There, rocks that contain various stories shine brilliantly. I'm walking on the hot land of Iceland in today's journey. Next, I'm passing Selja Landsfoss to go to Eyjafjallajökull. The weather in Iceland is so erratic that there is a saying that goes, just wait 30 minutes even if the weather doesn't suit you. <laughs> However, even the rainfall in Iceland can be another beautiful sight. Wow! Selenia's Pos. Numerous waterfalls were formed in Iceland due to volcanic activity as well as glaciers. Among the waterfalls, Selja Landsfoss is famous for offering a special experience. You can walk into the space behind the waterfall. You can get a true view of Cellulansfoss from there.
the pure and clear sound of the waterfall provides a deep stirring in me that is grander than any symphony. For a while, I listened to the music of the waterfall. Celia Landsfoss is like a secret opera house hidden inside nature. About 10 minutes by car from the waterfall, I enter the town of Thorolsfell, which was hardest hit in the 2010 volcanic eruption. Everywhere in a two kilometer radius of the volcano was covered in ash at the time of the eruption. This is right the place of the village. There were no deaths at the time, but it did cause air travel disruption as the ash covered the entire skies of Europe. The eruption covered everything on land in an instant. I wonder how the people who live here remember it. I come to one of the houses in the village. Nice to meet you. Same to you. I'm Bia Lam. I'm Thoraren. I'm from Korea. Hey, welcome. So how was uh, sky at the time? Uh, it was, of course, uh, very, uh, you know, uh -huh. ash coming over here. Uh -huh. you know? To here? Yeah. Wow. And drop down here. Like the stone? Not that big. <laughs> it's just fine ash that uh, makes things get older than they are, you know. Ah, it's because of the volcano. Yeah. Ah. And people have lived in this area for th uh, hundreds of years. Mm. And why not to survive in ah. the 21st <laughs> century if you could do it 150 years ago? Wow. So, oh. So it's just, just leave it. Yeah. To them, the volcano is simply a part of life. This is how they continue to live today. Yeah, I still survive. <laughs> okay, thank okay. you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Yeah, you get... We don't have to go. 옆에 화살이 터진다거나 그랬을 때 사람들이 얼마나 놀라고 겁이 많을까요? 근데 이 사람들은 너무너무 긍정적인 마음으로 예전부터 이렇게 살아왔고 앞으로 이렇게 살아갈 것이고 어떻게 보면 그 긍정적인 마음이 어, 이 아이슬란드를 지키는 이 사람들의 큰 힘이 되지 않을까. 사실 그런, 너무 부러운, 부러운 것 같아요. 그런, 그런. 어떻게 화산 옆에 이렇게 사는데 이렇게 편하게 살 수가 있을까? 하지만 그게 오히려 진짜 사는 방법일 수도 있는 것 같아요.